ओके गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन सो दिस इज लाइव सेशन फॉर द वीक इलेवन कंटेंट सो इन दिस वी विल डिस्कस दसमिक लाइक द सेस्मिक रेस्पॉन्स फॉर द मल्टाई डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिस्टम इफ वे हैव इन द मल्टाई इन रियलिटी मल्टाई डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिस्टम आर इन द इन द जोन ऑफ इन रियलिटी द स्टोरेज आर द मल्टाई डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिस्टम so we do need to find out the response of the multi md of system uh, for the earthquakes so for this we will solve four type of problems four long problems are there so let us do one by one so let me share my screen is my screen visible yes sir visible okay thank you so so the first question is that we have a three story shear frame which is shown in the figure which is excited by the horizontal ground motion which is u g double dot t so we need to find out the modal expansion of the effective earthquake forces then the story shear force responds in term of the a and t and then the base over trending moment in term of the a and t like we do not have the uh, particular response spectra for this uh, for this uh, problem so we will find out the response in terms of the a n or d n like a n is the uh, acceleration in the nth mode so like that we will do that okay so to solve this as this is the previous like this is the kind of same example we are following the last lectures also so we will have the already the mass matrix and the stiffness matrix from the last classes so let me write those things so the mass matrix for this system like the degree of freedom this for the one this is for two and this is for three so the mass matrix would be the m 0 0 0 m 0 0 0 0.5 m okay and the stiffness matrix is same as from the last class so it is the for the one story it would be 2 into 12 ei by l cube okay so that would be not for l so this will become 24 ei by h cube because here the, this is the l is equal to h so 24 ei by h cube so each story has the uh, stiffness of the k because the ei is same for all these stories so that would become as a k1 plus k2 minus k2 zero minus k2 k2 plus k3 minus k3 zero minus k3 and k3 so if we replace k1 is equal to k because all all the stiffnesses are same so that will be replaces as a 2k minus k 0 minus k 2k minus k 0 minus k k so this is our stiffness matrix so now we need to find out the eigen value and the eigen vector so for this we have done the same thing in the last class so i will do it quickly so that you do not need to spend too much time on that so that would be 2 minus lambda minus 1 0 minus 1 2 minus lambda minus 1 0 minus 1 1 minus lambda by 2 and if you will take the determinant of this so your equation will becomes minus lambda cube by 2 Plus three lambda square minus nine by two lambda plus one is equal to zero. So if I solve this, my lambda one is coming out to be point two six seven nine k by m. Lambda two would be two k by m, and lambda three will be 
3.7302 k by m okay so if i solve this further my omega 1 would be 2.53 ei by mh cube omega 2 would be 6.92 ei by mh cube and omega 3 would be 9.461 ei by mh cube in the mod shapes that has been calculated in the last class as well so those were 0 0.5 0 0.8661 1, minus 101 0 0.5 minus 0 0.8661 1. so these are the mod shapes so these are the like in the every question we need to find out these two things like the model frequencies and the like the mode shape or the eigenvalue and eigenvectors so now come to the part one what is the part one part a in the part a we have asked the model expansion of effective earthquake force so in the class when you go to the week 11 content you will find out that the modal expansion sn is given by the participation factor gamma n time the mass mat the, times the mass matrix times the shape function by n how do we that get it that will be discussed during the class so you, if you go through that lecture you will find out that thing is the right okay so for finding out the so for this we have the mass matrix we have the model mod, uh, mod shapes so we need to focus on the participation factor like which mode is par participation factor means which mode is mo most predominant by using that we can find out like if our participation factor is high then our that mode is the more predominant if that is lesser then it is less predominant kind of thing so first find out the participation factor so how do we find out that that can be determined as a phi and t time mass matrix time the influence vector l then phi and t mass matrix and phi n so for this one we have everything except the influence vector l so can anyone tell me what would be my influence vector for this case like i have the story p story which has m by 2 m m fixed support so what would be the influence vector l did you remember in the i think in the session 8 or 9 we have calculated the influence vector so anyone is there anyone who can tell me like what is the influence vector for this one for this kind of problem okay so the influence vector for this if my ground motion is applied uz in any direction so my structure will deform because the ground motion is applied ugt at this point also this point is it would be for the this will be also for the ugt for this also ugt so that will deform in this way like that ground motion will be applied in the same way for all the stories so that would be one 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 so influence vector for this would be one 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 okay so now find out the partition factor one. lambda one the sorry not lambda 1 gamma 1 gamma 2 gamma 3 
can you explain this again this influence uh, influence uh, yes yes <clears throat> influence vector is that how how my ground motion is applied to my structure okay so in this my ground motion let us suppose ug is applied at the ground so the same level of ground motion like the acceleration will be applied at all the degree of freedom so that would be the like it deform my structure would be like same kind of ug will be experienced by this so did you remember when we solve a question in which we have done some there was some structure was 3d structure we have applied we have applied different degree of freedom this one this one and that's the rotation so for all of them like if my ground motion is applied in this direction let us suppose x direction my influence vector l was 100 zero, zero. if my ground motion apply in the y direction then my influence vector would be the 010 and if i apply the rotation in the about the z direction if you remember like in the diagonal direction if i apply a ground motion uz double dot at that time my influence vector was what was that 1 by root 2 one by root two zero is that kind of thing you did you remember yes yes okay. so that's how like how my ground machine is applied to the structure so in this case so it will be same for all the degree of freedom so that would be one 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 okay so using that we can find out the partition vector so for the first gamma one that phi n is that phi 1 t mass matrix time the influence vector divided by the phi 1 t mass matrix phi 1 so for this you can find out 0 0.5 0 0.8661 1 mass matrix we have m 0 0 0 m 0 0 0 0.5 m and l is what 1 1 1 okay and then this is the 0 0.5 0 0.8661 1 then my mass matrix m 0 0 0 m 0 0 0 0.5 m times 0 0.5 0 0.8661 1 so can you give me the partition factor calculate the partition factor for this how much you are getting okay similarly you can get for the gamma 2 that would be minus 1 0 1 then the mass matrix then the influence vector 1 1 1 then similarly minus 1 0 1 mass matrix minus 1 0 1 so that again and for the gamma 3 also that would be the 0. 0.5 minus 0. 0.8661 1 time mass matrix time the influence vector 1 1 1 divided by 0. 0.5 minus 0. 0.8661 1 time mass matrix time 0. 0.5 0. 0.8661 so can you give me that model partition factor for all three modes try that
एनीवन विद द गामा वन गामा टू गामा थ्री नो इट शुड बी कम आउट टू बी गामा वन वुड बी वन पॉइंट टू फोर फोर इट शुड बी गामा टू वुड बी पॉइंट थ्री थ्री एंड गामा थ्री वुड बी जीरो पॉइंट जीरो एट नाइन थ्री थ्री इफ यू वॉन्ट टू चेक दैट वेदर यूर गामा वन गामा टू गामा थ्री आर करेक्ट और नॉट द सम ऑफ ऑल द गामा एंस शुड बी वन So this way you can check how much your gamma n. So uh, did you find where did uh, where you have done the mistake? Finding out the gamma one. Yes, sir, I am checking. Try this if you have any issues. then after finding out the gamma one gamma two gamma three we can find out the model expansion Okay, I got correct answers. Okay. So now after getting that, you can find out model expansion. So find out the S one, S two, so after that you can find out this one so here my s1 would be point 622 1.07 point 622 times m Okay, this would be point three three zero point one six six m, and that would be the zero point zero four four minus zero point zero seven seven. And zero point zero four four times m. So these are the my model expansion. So I can write it like this: how my uh, mass is distributing in that, so that using that acceleration, 
using if you multiply with the acceleration you will be directly find out the forces in that so that m by 2 m m that would be divided in this the first word it is 0.622 m 1.077 m and again 0.622 m plus this is the in the opposite direction 0.166 m this is 0 and this is 0.33 m okay then this one will be 0.0447 m this would be in the opposite direction that would be 0.0 773 m okay this is also and then it is the 0.044 m so when you find out the modal expansion your sum of all the modal expansion if you do for the each degree of freedom you will find your for the degree of freedom if you sum this this one if you sum this one this one this one it will coming out to be equal to m by 2 for the second degree of freedom if you do this this one and this one it will coming out to be m for the th first degree freedom if you do sum of all these it will be coming out to be m okay so how by mass how much mass is participating in each mode we can find out through this did you get it like Sir, means here in the 0.622 m is the maximum uh, participating uh, means yeah. in the first third degree of yes in the like the first mode 0 0.62 m uh, like you can say 60 percent mass is participating for the first degree of freedom the for the second degree it is around uh, 100 percent mass and for the th third one is also it is 60 percent mass is participating. no we have only uh, 0.5 m right yes the top floor but uh, is acting 0.62 m but in the other mode it is participating in the negative direction so it balancing overall should be same m by 2 so due to some interference between the modes between <coughs> the degree of freedom that's why it may be higher or lower it, it, it can be happen right what it can be happen like that oh, okay. when we apply earthquake force only uh, like this yes when you do the analysis in the softwares like sap or ETAB, whatever you do so first you do the, the model analysis and then from the model analysis you find out that which modes are predominant your so using those you find out what you calculate those things model participation factors so from these things you find out which mode is more predominant so from here also we can find out our first mode is predominant 1.224 it is giving second and third if you neglect it not much different will be coming to the solution so that's Pre all predominant yeah. means uh, uh, we have to uh, we have to consider in uh, first mode right? yes first mode it is dominant means more effect of first mode na? yes yes that that same thing predominant and i am talking about the predominant you are saying dominant same okay same thing. so the first mode is dominant kind of thing so this is a modal expansion now we need to find out in the part b we need to find out the story shear force response in terms of a and t okay so for this one 
so for this one like <coughs> i have three modes okay one two three so i have the omega one omega two omega three okay corresponding to that i will be having t1 t2 t3 corresponding to that i will have the certain response spectra some kind of okay certain response spectra so for each time period some sort of acceleration i will be having so that that is here a1 a2 a3 okay so that acceleration if i will multiply with this that would give me the force in particular story and the mode so for the first mode i have the a1t like function of the time you can say a2t a3t okay so in the first mode how can i calculate i have the mass if i multiply with this a1 a and t will give me the force in the nth nth mode okay so for the first first mode my expansion vectors are 0.622 m that is 1.0 Zero seven seven four m, and again that is point six two two m. Okay, and if I will multiply this with the a one t, a one t, a one t will give me the force in three degree freedom, force in two, force in one degree of freedom. Okay, or I can write it like this in the first mode, all these things. F three one, F two one, F one one. Okay. Similarly, for the second one, I have point one six six m zero m, and that is point three three m. If I will multiply this with the a two t, a two t, a two t, so it will be become as a f three, f two, f one in the second mode. Okay. Then similarly, if I will go with the third mode, in which it is zero point. Zero four four six m. This one is the zero point zero seven seven three m, and this one is zero point zero four four six m. Multiply with the a three t, a three t, a three t will give me the f three. F two, F one, in the third mode. Okay, so from here I can find out the shear. Okay, so for the shear force, that would be V three one, V three, V two one, and V one one. Okay. Similarly, here V three two, V two two, V one two. Similarly, V three three, V two three, V one three. Okay. So if you find out your V three one. Would be how much? Point six two. Point six two two m a one t v two one. If you find out, then summation of this f two one plus f three one. Okay. If you do that, you will find out this as a one point six nine five m a one t. Okay, and for the V one one, you have to sum of all F one one, F two one, F three one. 
so if you do that you will find out it will be 2.317 m a1 t okay similarly you have to find out v through 2 v22 and v12 so for this that would be the equal to f32 that would be equal to f32 plus f22 and that would be equal to f32 f22 f12 so if you do this you will get 0.166 m a2t and that is in the opposite direction so that would be minus okay Similarly, V22 would be same, negative 0.166 M A2T. Uh, for the V12, it would be, that is in the negative and that is in the positive. So, it would be coming out to be 0.167 M A2T. For this, again, we need to calculate V33, V23 and v13 so for this v33 would be same whatever it is 0.04466 m a3 for v23 like that is the positive and that would be the negative so that would be coming out to be minus 0.0326 a3t and for the v13 summation of all so that will be coming out to be 0 0.0102 m a3t so this is the story uh, shear in each in each mode okay for the first mode for the second and for the third so if i need to calculate the story shear force in each story maximum shear force so that can be done by the like if i will calculate the storage shear force in the first story so that would be the v11 v12 v13 for finding out the v storage shear in the second story so that would be the v v21 v22 v23 and for finding out in the third story that would be the v31 v32 v33 okay so if you do the sum for the v1 this one v13 v12 and v11 so if you do that you can find out your stories here for the first story it is 2.3 one three a one plus point one six seven a two plus zero point zero one two zero two a three multiply with the m okay similarly that would be one point six nine nine a1 minus 0.166 m a2 not m we will keep it later 0 0.03264 a3 multiply with the m and then the last one is that 0.622 a1 0.166 a2 plus 0 0.0446 a3 time m so this is the story series okay in each story now we need to find out the overturning moment in part c we need to find out the overturning moment at the base so for this we have the forces
for each story we have the forces 0.62 ma1 1.07 33 m a1 0.62 m a1 for this it is 0.166 m a2 that is 0 and that is 0.33 m a2 and for the third mode it would be 0 0.0446 m a3 then it would be 0 0.0773 m a3 and it would be 0 0.0 4466 and a3 so you have the equal height which is h h h for all the cases so now you can find out the moment easily simple like if you find out the moment in the for this one it will be the mb1 like base moment in the mode 1 and b2 and b3 okay or so then finding out the mb1 would be 0.662 m a1 time this distance would be the 3h okay plus 1.073 m a1 time 2h plus 0.662 m a1 time h so this is mb1 for mb2 that would be 0.166 m a2 time 3h plus 0.33 m a2 time h similarly mb3 will be 0.04466 m a3 time 3h minus 0 0.773 m a3 time 2h plus 0 0.0446 m a3 time h <coughs> so the total overturning moment mb would be mb1 mb2 mb3 okay so if you will do that mb1 mb2 mb3 your final solution would be coming out to 4.634 m a1 h1 minus 0.166 m a2 h plus 0 0.0240 m a3 h so this is your final base moment so from this you can also observe like this will govern the first mode you will be have the higher moment here it is like lesser and then the third mode it is very less so is there any doubt in this question anyone no sir okay if not then we are moving to the further question in the next question what is that we have the same thing we have done in the this question we have the values now height 4 meter mass 45,000 kg i inertia damping ratio response spectra is given to us so we need to find out the floor displacement story shear floor and the base overturning moment so we have find out the story shear and the base overturning moment here only floor displacement is remaining and then we need to what we need to do we need to combine the peak response using the srss model okay square root of sum of square model combination rule to obtain the 
peak value of the total resource for each response quantity quantity in the part a okay so that question you can do easily so what we need to do we need to do calculation part in this okay so oh, i will write the what were over omega 1 so in that time what we have we have the omega 1 was the 2.53 ei by mhq omega 2 was 6.92 ei by mhq omega 3 was 9.461 ei by mhq so now you have the value for h is given to as h is given to as 4 meter mass is given to as the 45000 kg inertia is given to you 58000 cm power 4 and e is given to you as a 200 gpa or 2 to 10 raised to the power 5 mpa so can you get me the value of omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 by using this omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 and then along with that i want the t1 t2 t3 so please do the calculation so using those value you can find out the omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 which same thing i think we have done in the last previous lectures also but at that time i don't remember that m and i was same or not so you can find out what is your m i and omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 corresponding to t1 t2 t3 so i have a question <clears throat> like before the exam uh, do you want that should i conduct a overall review or doubt session for that one hour session for all the weeks yes sir yes sir uh, i i have also i am also uh, asking some favorable question uh, like uh, uh, how how the questions will be like uh, in optional basis or like uh, like empty base empty questions whether we have to use this uh, calculator yes uh, uh, like any link linked question i am asking like a uh, uh, model model paper like uh, how the questions will be okay. that will be only the question will be the like the objective type paper would be there okay. and uh, all the questions would be objective and the, you should be it could be like the number of questions may be high uh, like <clears throat> more so you have to be like those those would be might be tricky question and for the second part which we are covering the multi degree of freedom system in that nothing would be that tricky you know that is all only calculation part so tricky part would be the before the for the single degree of freedom system might be up to seventh or eighth chapter or like the week there may be up to because we have the different uh, combinations to find out the stiffness or the multi degree of freedom system you have to make the equations so there can be some tricky questions but for these things there not be any much tricky questions so prepare well like that and 
we will have that separate session one hour session uh we, that NPTEL team will let you know the time and the date i will keep it only for one hour because that will become very large and in the next lecture also because the isolator part is very less covered in that uh week 12 content so around half an hour or one hour we will cover isolator part and then after that one hour we will discuss some or review problem kind of thing we can discuss so approximately how many questions will be there that 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 i don't know that depend on the uh, like the professors i don't know how much questions will be there how many questions will be there but that would be number of questions would be very high matlab very much because those would be like tricky question or those would be interconnected questions like one part one question may contain two three sub parts like of that can be there because if you like the same question is there like we are solving if in that question they can ask like what is your Uh, displacement in the shear in the second story, third story, or what is your bending moment at the base? So that that how those things would be divided in that parts. That but thing. but we may expect all our objective, right? Yes, all our objectives. That's why th that would be the sub part. Okay, okay, that's fine. Because that exam is the CBT based. Okay, so yes. obviously that would be objective. No, no, no. I am asking like uh, you say, uh, like uh, objective means uh, empty. We are getting empty bits or choice based. No, that sometimes it may be the fill in the. Uh, there may be fill in the blank also. Not the. Yes, yes. That is what I am asking. Fill in the blank should be there. Okay, okay. So find out the omega one, omega two, omega three. sir in next session uh, i have my few doubts uh, regarding dynamics lab so uh, please give me 10 minutes so that we can discuss those doubts because they are uh, like more practical and how to do the calculation i feel difficulty in the next session we will discuss yes sir yes yes sir okay sir so over omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 i am getting that omega 1 is that is coming out to be uh 16.0808 radian per second omega 2 would be 43.96 radian per second and omega 3 would be 60 radian per second okay if you calculate the time period corresponding breath tn would be 2 pi by omega n so your t1 would be 0.3907 second t2 would be 0.1429 second and t3 would be 0.1046 second okay and you have the mode shape from the last question that those are 0.5 Point eight six six one minus one zero one point five minus point eight six six one. Okay, so in the last previous question, we have the what was the unknown? We have the unknowns were a one t, a two, and a three. So here we need to find out those things. Okay, so corresponding to t one. let me zoom it corresponding to t1 is equal to 0.39 t1 is equal to 0.39 t2 is equal to 0.1429 and t3 is equal to 0.1046 so <clears throat> find out the response or the a spectral acceleration what would be the corresponding to 0.39 what would be the my a can you find it you by seeing this response spectra that is 2.71 meter per second 
yes because that is in the range of 0.25 the 0.125 to 0.66 is it the same 0.125 or yes yes okay so for t1 and t2 t1 and t2 lies in this range so my a1 and a2 would be 2.71 g okay and what would be my t3 uh, for the a3 so t3 lying in this range falling in this range so for this what is my a3 so that a3 would be the 11.7 times tn to power 0.704 okay so let us get put to the system so our a1 was 2.71 g a2 is also 2.71 g and a3 was 11.7 time t3 time power 0.704 so can you get me the a3 so that is the 11.7 into 0.1046 power 0.704 so that is coming out to be 2.387g okay so so the, you need to multiply with the 9.81 and one thing is there your response spectra is scaled to 0.2g also so you need to scale down the response spectra so your actual so you can write it like the s1 s2 s3 so your a1 would be s1 times z like s1 time 0.2 okay so that will 2.71 into 9.81 into 0.2 okay so that will be coming out to be 26.58 meter per second square similarly a2 would be a2 would be s2 time 0.2 so that would be also same 26.58 meter per second square a3 would be s3 time 0.2 that would be 2.3879 time 9.81 time 0.2 so that would coming out to be a1 is 5.31 i think you, you have calculated s1 values if you multiply with 0 0.2 you will get 5.3 you need a to multiply with the 9.81 also no? yes 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 after multiplying only we will get 5.3 oh okay see. okay 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 that is only the s1 so so that will be coming out to be 5.317 that would be also 5.317 meter per second square and that would be the 4.684 4 meter per second square okay so to find out the displacement also we can find out the d1 d2 d3 so your d dn would be what an divided by the omega n square okay so for this your d1 would be 0 0.02056 meter d2 would be 0 0.00275 meter d3 would be 0 0.00129 meter okay and we have calculated orderly or mass partition factor is the 1.244 For the second second mode gamma 2 is the minus 0.33 and the for the third 
mode it is 0.0844 okay so the model response is determined by the q1 is given by the gamma n time the dn okay and then this d1 d2 d3 values came from where this one you have the a1 a2 a3 okay 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 omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 okay okay thank you so after finding out the q1 you can find out the u1 unt so your unt would be phi n time q1 okay so let us find out the each so in the first mode u1 t or i can write it like that u11 u21 u31 would be phi n is what 0 0.5 0 0.8661 one time gamma n is the 1.244 and the dn is 0 0.02056 meter okay so you can find out this calculate the u1 similarly u2 so that would be u1 Sir, yes d1 d2 d3 are uh, means uh, degree of freedom 1 2 3 d1 d2 d3 are the your overall displacement in the each mode like as we have discussed in the last class also like uh, like in the first mode i have like equivalent mass some mass some stiffness using this i have some displacement d so that is this d1 okay means uh, maximum deflection of the mode one yes in the mode one how much like in the mode one because we have the equivalent time period in the corresponding mode one so how much displacement would be there and that displacement would be divided in each degree of freedom with multiplication of the your i that uh, qn and that is phi n yes, yes 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 means that total displacement will be get divided into per degree of freedom yes 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 okay sir okay like we are doing like equivalent degree of freedom kind of thing in the first like if we are talking in the first mode in the first mode we have also some masses in the each degree of freedom we have some stiffnesses but we are what we are doing finding out the generalized mass m1 kn in the last section last few lectures so from that we find out the d1 and then we distribute it to the each degree of freedom with the multiplying with the mod shape so same thing is there it is not corresponding to one degree of freedom it is corresponding to the first mode second mode spectral yes, displacement yes, yes. okay sir okay clear okay so find out that u1 t u2 t so for the u2 t is also minus 1 0 1 multiply with the minus 0.33 into 0 0.0 0 okay meter for u3 u13 u23 u33 that would also 0.5 minus 0.8661 times 0 0.0843 time 0 0.001231129 meter so if you will solve this and i am dividing with the 1000 uh, multiplying with the 1000 also so that it will come into mm so it will be good to write in the mm
multiply with 10 raised to the power 3 so you will get it minus 0 0.9150 0.915 I am on similarly 0 0.05 Four three zero four zero nine four one. So these are the story displacement. So we can find out the total displacement. So the total displacement of the first story U one would be the u11 u12 u13 for the second story that would be the u21 u22 u23 for the third story u31 u32 u33 so can you get me the value of u1 u2 u3 What are the value of the u1, u2, u3? Eleven point eight eight nine. Yes, that would be the eleven point eight nine. Twenty one point nine eight you can say 22 and that is a 26.52 mm so those are the total displacement now we need to find out the stories here so stories here we have calculated in the earlier cases so we need to put the value only there okay so so the for, for the stories here what were the forces So that was the case in which it was the 0.622 amp time A1. one 1.0733 amp time A1. 0.622 amp time A1. So if you put the amp, amp for the first story, how much amp? And M M not the first story, M is the same, 45,000. So if you put the M as a 45,000 kg, and A1 is that, how much? That was the 5.71, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39. Okay, if you do that, you will get it, 14. Eight eight. We can substitute uh, the final equation, right? Yeah, yes, right. you can. You can do that also. But for the explanation, I am writing this. Whatever uh, uh, expression for the v one, v two, you are getting, you can do that also. For this one, we were getting three nine seven one seven Newton zero seven nine six seven five Newton, and for the third mode, it would be ninety four. 13.4 newton sixteen two nine three newton nine point one three newton okay so if you get 
you calculate <coughs> if you calculate your b11 is coming out to be 554.4 kN v21 <coughs> is 405.62 kN v31 is 148.82 kN similarly in v21 v22 v23 is around 40 kN you can write directly minus 40 kN plus 40 kN okay then v13 is 2.5 kN v3 is 6.8 kN And V3 is 9.4 kilometer. Similarly, you can find out the overturning moment also. So, overturning moment at each floor. In this question, you need to calculate the overturning moment at each floor. At the each floor, you need to calculate the overturning moment. So, what is this floor? At this floor, at this floor. This one, this one, this one. This one, this one, this one. So, that would be the M31, M21, M11, M32, M22, M12. M33. M23 M13 and the height is given to you 4 meter okay so if you calculate I will uh, write directly you can multiply this so your m31 would be 148 kN times the 4 so that would be the 595.3 kN meter similarly m21 that will be coming out to be 2217 0.8 kilonewton meter similarly m11 is coming out to be 4435.57 kilonewton meter same for the m1 M32, M3, M23, M. M32, M22, M12, and then that would be the M33, M23, M13. So M23 is coming out to be. So 
sorry it is so m32 is coming out to be minus 158 kilo newton meter m22 is coming out to be minus 317.73 kilo newton meter m12 is coming out to be minus 157.9 kilo newton meter similarly m33 is coming out to be 37.65 kilo newton meter m23 is coming out to be 10.13 kilo newton meter and m13 is coming out to be 20.26 kilo newton meter so these are the overturning moments it like each response we have calculated now we need to calculate the peak response quantities. Peak response quantities. So for this, how do you calculate? So in the first floor, like you have the uh, for the first floor, how do we you get it? U11 square, U21 square, U31 square. For the second floor, you will get it. u12 square u13 square in this u21 square u22 square and u23 square and for the third floor it would be u31 square u three two square and u33 square so can you get those things you have a u1 u2 u3 should i give them those value those vectors are here so let me write those vectors so that you can calculate So those vectors are for the first mode those are 12.75 22.08 25.5 mm for the second mode it is 0 0.9150 0 0.915 and for the third mode those were 0 0.05435 0 0.0941 and 0 0.1087 mm so using those find out that is for the first second third first second third first second third Can you give me the U1, U2, U3? Similarly, we need to find out the stories here, maximum, then the overturning. Can you go uh, there overturning moments? Yes. That, uh, overturning moments means uh, uh, at each uh, level you are, you are calculating. Yes. That means M31 this came from m31 is the in the first mode in the third floor first mode in third floor means uh, 
the or the force into uh, the height four meter. Four meter. Okay. And then M two one will be. M two one would be this force. Let us call this force F three one, and that F two one. So it would be F three one time two h. Okay. okay. Plus F two one time h. Okay. Okay. Similar like uh, similar things like there. Like if I write, I have F three. F two, F one. So in this, it would be F three time h. This moment would be F three time two h plus F two time h. Okay, and at the base, it would be F one time three h, F two time two h plus F three time h. Is it okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sir, it's a reverse actually. F one into h. Yes. Yes. That. F three into three h. Yes. Yes. I think. That is very. That that part is very confusing actually. Huh. That F one into h plus F two into two h plus F three into three h. <coughs> One one minute here, okay okay. In each mode, you we are calculating. Yes right? yes yes. Okay okay. Uh, that that means if if you add m one one plus m one two plus m one three, that is like a base moments, uh, like a base moment. No. Base Need moment base moment would be your this one m one one is the base moment for the first mode. Okay. M one two is the base moment for the second mode. M three is the base moment for the third mode. For the third mode. So the total base moment would be the sum of all three. It's the base. Oh yes, yes. So anyone with the U one, U two, U three. So the U one would be twelve point seven five square plus point nine one five square plus zero point zero five four three five square. So you do that, you will find out that would be the twelve point seven eight mm. Okay. For the second story, twenty two point zero eight square. Zero square point zero nine four one square. That would be nearly twenty two point zero eight m. For the U three, it would be twenty five point five square plus point nine one five square plus point one zero eight seven square. So that will come around twenty five point five. So these are for the peak response in the displacement, floor displacement. Now the peak response for stories here. Sir, we have calculated u one, u two, u three above also. Can you scroll up? Uh, this one yes here that, that that ah. is the absolute if you go through that that is the absolute sum method there are two method to find out the peak response okay one is okay. the absolute sum method one is the srss square root of sum of square and another is the cqc cqc yes yes, yes. okay so we are calculating by both the methods yes in this course i think sir has covered only the up to uh, yes, like sir, absolute yes, and the srss Okay. Yes. So yes. You they will ask you to find out. They will mention like you need to find out through the SRSS or the okay. absolute. Okay. In absolute, know. we can directly do the addition. Yes. And in SRSS, we have to do the uh, square in uh, square root in square. Yes. Square root of sum okay. of the squares. 
Yes, yes. So we have the u1, u2, u3. Now we need to find out the stories here. So for the stories here also, in the first story, that v1 would be v11 square, v12 square, v13 square. For second story, that would be again v21 square, v22 square, v23 square. And for the third story, it would be v31 square, v32 square, v33 square. Okay. So we have the v1, v2, v3 here. So from this value, you can utilize. Okay. So for the first one, <coughs> that would be 5, 5, 5 square plus 40 square plus 2.5 square. For the second story, 405 square, 40 square, 6.8 square. For the third story, that will be 148 square, 40 square, 9.4 square. Okay, so let me write. So that would be the 554.4 square, 40 square, 2.5 square. So it is coming out to be 55, 5.84 kilometer. If you go with the second, it will be 405.62 square plus 39.71 square. That will be no, 39. Here we are using 40, so use 40. And 6.88 square. So that would be 407.61 kilometer okay and for the third one that will be the third story 148.82 square plus 40 square plus 9.4 square so that would be coming around 154 and 31 kilometer so this was the for the shear now calculate peak response for the moment. So that would be for the first floor M1, that would be the M11 square, M12 square, M13 square. For the second floor, that would be M21 square, M22 square, M23 square. And for the third floor, it would be M31 square, M32 square, M33 square. Okay. So we have M1, M2, M3. We have all the all this value corresponding to this. So this is for the, the third story, this is for the second and this is for the first. So using that can you find out those maximum response? Give a try. Using those moment value, find out the response. Anyone with the M1, M2, M3? I think this SRSS method is like uh, okay, when we have a, in three different modes, 
in each mode uh, when you sum up all the modes when you get the answer it's not uh, peak right I don't understand what are you want to say. No, no. Uh, you you are telling like uh, previously we are calculating absolute method. Yes, but uh, though that was not the absolute. For the absolute, you need to remove the sign convention as well. Only uh, the SRSS is only for a peak response. Yes, we are finding out the peak response. But the previously we have found that U and U T U three are not peak. Yes, that was that can be peak. If you take that response as a this one, like the mode, you have to take like that. Like in this case, some of them are negative also. But for the peak, you need to add all these things: twenty point twelve point seven five plus point nine one five, irrespective of the sign. Okay. Then it would be your absolute sum. Uh, you suppose if I. Sum up like that. Yes. Will I get same as a SRSS? Not because the app like the actual like correct method is the CQC, then SRSS, then the absolute sum method. These are the three different technique to find out the peak response. I am I am thinking like uh, I think this is not a peak response. This one is not. This one oh. is not. Oh. oh. But this one can not, be this one can be peak response if yes, yes. that it can be that yes. can be u11 mode plus u12 mode plus u13 mode then it should be peak. Mm. Peak response you can find with the three ways with the absolute sum method, SRS and CQC. Okay? okay, so in the first part we didn't calculate the peak response. We are calculating peak response in the second part and only using the SRSS. That's main thing is there. But in absolute method, we don't take the mode. In absolute, we I think we take the mode. Is okay. it, in the absolute, anyone is there who can tell like whether we take the mode or not? No, we didn't take any mode. In absolute, like we, irrespective of the sign, I think, absolute is what? Without sign convention, I think. But the answers are? Answers are nearly same because our first mode is more predominant. That's why I think. Is anyone there who can tell us about the absolute sum method? Anyone is there? Whether should we take the absolute or only the normal sum? What what taught in the class? Do you remember? Anyone? Yes, actually, in uh, in our classes, uh, what uh, what I got is uh, SRSS and that uh, another method is there, right? The, those two methods are for uh, we can't find the peak response in normal case, uh, with, so that we we are using these two methods. That is what I am what I am getting. This SRSS is for uh, calculating the peak response because uh, in each mode we have a uh, maximum response, but when we, it will not 
it will not correct when you sum up all the maximum uh, yeah, pieces actually what happen like there are three methods okay what is the absolute sum model in which like which is not popular okay because that is not give the proper results so that that's why we use the srss square root of sum of square and one is the cqc complete quadratic combination okay so here we are calculating the response using only the srss method you can also calculate the response using the absolute sum it is and you need to take the mod not the like the uh, total sum what we have done here so here over like the when you calculate the you, due to absolute sum you need to add directly 12.75 12.75 plus 0.915 okay plus 0.0543 irrespective of your sign so you will get your uh, u1 you will get around here we are getting 11.89 but you will get it 13.7 so that will yeah. be higher yes okay so that is not a like that will not that overestimate that that is not a correct way that's why we are using the srss yes yes but yes. in the absolute sum you need to take absolute but these are but, not peaks but we, we are doing here not absolute right yes these are uh, these are not peaks mm, yes yes these are the total not the peak yes that's what because i am confusing like uh, uh, we 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 can i am comparing still, like, uh, because we still didn't use the uh, absolute sum method so that is different thing Yes, yes. We are using only SRSS. That's okay. it. Okay. So finding out the M1, M2, M13. So let me write it. If if suppose if in in question if we ask like uh, what is the displacement at uh, uh, first degree of freedom? Yes. Just he ask like that. Then you Not, have to then you uh, have to add total directly. Nothing. Directly. Like, that means uh, what we have done. Uh, yeah, the, this one. This one. Yes. Yes. This one, this one. If if we ask like uh, peak res peak displacement means uh, then can calculate yes. using SRSS or yes. CQC. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm getting. So then M one, M two, M three, we will get it. Forty four three five point. Five seven square plus one fifty seven point nine square plus twenty point two six square. So that will be coming out to be four three four four three eight point four two kilonewton meter. Then for the M two, it will be twenty two one seven point eight square. Plus three one seven point seven three square plus ten point one three square. Then you will get it two two four zero point four six kilo newton meter. Then five nine five point three square. One fifty-eight point eight square, thirty-seven point six five square. Then it would be six one seven point two six kilonewton meter. So these these are the peak response quantities for the flow uh, flow displacement, storage here and the moment. Okay, so in which your M one one would be your peak, uh, be, uh, your turning moment or base over turning base moment. Okay. For this is for the second floor. That is for the third. Okay. <clears throat> Any doubt in this, or should we move to the another question? Yes, I have a doubt. Yes. Uh, we have calculated that uh, total displacement, right? Yes. What What are the displacement means? Uh, whether they are minimum or maximum, which displacement they are? Minimum or maximum? I don't get it. What you are asking? No, we have found right that twelve. Uh, you can you can scroll up, scroll. Up. Yes, yes, that eleven point eight nine twenty two twenty six. Yes. What what we can call those u one u two? This is general total displacement, not the peak. It is not the maximum. Okay, it is not peak. It is not maximum. But 
at which place it is a normal yeah. summation like you have like what are the what actually we do if we have the response like uh, if we have a particular structure we analysis it for the different different mode like we have let us suppose 10 modes so what we do we find out the response in the eight eight each 10 modes like we have the displacement u1 u2 u3 in the all 10 modes so the we then we what we do we do simple summation like what is our aggregate response is coming like that totals response with the so that is the total response not the peak okay then uh then I am not understanding this uh, u1, u2, u3. You are summing the all modes, right? Yes. But uh, then we, these are at uh, t equal to some time, or these yes, are at, yes. uh, as, at what time these are uh, displaced? They, they, these are actually your maximum time period. Like uh, uh, we have uh, uh, this, this is corresponding to for t1, this is t2, this is t3 okay so we are simple summing up not doing anything like we uh, like we, uh, before that we don't know the how to determine the peak so we have the response in each mode and we are summing up like do you know that what we were doing finding out the response like the response in each story you know that five time q1 phi one q1 sir we can say uh, previously it was for reference that what should yes. we consider maximum that's yes. why we are summing up but as the research goes on the srs method was developed and we are following this right yeah that can be say but initially from the last two three classes what we were doing we were doing the same thing summation of phi one q1 that was thing what we were doing yes 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 sir yes that sir. is the same thing is that we are doing here okay at that time i didn't uh, get this uh... actually uh, here if you do that like that summation of 5 and q1 then i think you will get it like normally uh, there, uh, same uh, there also i am not getting this uh, uh, question here uh, here only i am getting this you are uh, confusing what? with the peak so whenever the question come to ask you to the peak then you have to go some technique either absolute either srss either cqc okay, okay. if they are not asking the peak they are asking just the total displacement at the degree of freedom one is what then you have to give that directly summation total displacement at the degree of freedom yes means where uh, means at what time that is my time is that you are calculating already your response at the time period t and t1 t2 t3 you are not doing the time history analysis okay you are doing the response spectrum analysis all these are time history analysis is the different it that in that case you can say like i am finding out this is at that time period that is this is at a time t2 this is a different time it is not like that we are doing the response history analysis and the, our responses are corresponding to our particular model time like the uh, natural time period of the particular mode so that response t1 that u11 is corresponding to that particular time period tn t1 so here nothing like that like which time period that may be different different time period but we are doing like in that particular mode we are finding out that my displacement is u1 in that particular mode it, it is this one and the third mode it is this one so i simply can say like my total displacement at each degree of freedom is this simple okay when you ask the it what time then you need to do the time history analysis here you can't say with the in the response spectrum you can't say like which corresponding which time you are getting the things not like that in that time history case you will get the maximum or minimum but in the response spectrum how do you get that okay, okay. okay any doubt sir i want to ask one question yes uh, the software like e tab and instead pro are there so they are so consider the lumped mass and or there is uh, means as they are software they do consider different degrees of freedom yes what they do means actually they are considering lumped mass system and as per they are doing analysis or the software method is different no they are doing uh, like for the if you do the spectrum method okay then they are doing the whatever we are doing the same okay means three 
three story building is there then uh, three degrees of freedom yes. like that if, if you have the three story then if you do the model analysis you will get the three mode shape okay yes sir yes sir. the three mode shape you will get your model partition factor okay yes sir yes sir. when you go the model properties and when you find out the uh, response corresponding to the each uh, like if you do the response spectrum analysis then it will get the response in each mode t1 t2 t3 you have corresponding to that it will calculate and then you can find out what is your maximum or minimum value whatever it is directly okay so that means we can compare our yes uh, means whatever yes you can compare this manual calculation you same can uh, consider through that you will get most probably you will get the same answer and that's okay, that okay. to find out the peak response also there are options what method do you want to use srss yes, absolute yes, or yes. sqc if you have gone through okay, that okay. so you can do that i think we have not considered the damping in our uh, yes. calculation so yet. in that uh -huh. you do not need to consider the damping in the software means in ha huh. in the software you do, you show, uh, like there is a option for the damping but okay means we can put minimum or zero point something like that you okay can, you can put the damping if there is like we have the spectra like the damping 5% corresponding we have the response spectra corresponding to 5% so same response spectra you can define okay whatever yes. it is and the point 2 you can multiply with that and damping you need not to be keep there because we are not considering there without damping you can also analysis okay sir response spectra is different for a damping right yes the response spectra is different for different damping yeah then then we don't need to involve this damping in the software we are giving this response spectra already yes so you do not need to put the damping in that okay, okay. any doubt or should we move to the further question okay we can move to next question yes sir yes sir okay so in the next question also we need to calculate the displacement we need to calculate the displacement okay same procedure and then we have to find out the peak response like horizontal vertical displacement and then we have to find out the maximum bending moment at the support also due using the srss this is the same kind of question like you will be having mass matrix you have a stiffness matrix calculate the omega 1 omega 2 time period t1 t2 corresponding to that you will find out the your a1 a2 okay using that a1 a2 you can find out your displacement u you can find out your shear you can find out your moment okay so let us do that so can you tell me the uh, like the we have the ground motion in this system is like that it is applying in this do, uh, dotted line did you get it uj double dot is applying in the this way yes yes so what would be the my influence vector or the load vector that is 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 it would be uh, both the positive or negative Uh, u1 u1 is 1 by root 2 u2 is minus 1 by root 2 yes that is correct because if you divide it you will take the components then the it would be 1 by root 2 in this direction and that is the 1 by root 2 in this direction but our u2 is a downward so that's why the inverse vector for this would be the minus 1 by root 2 okay so the in the a part in the part a your load vector or you can say the influence vector l is 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 okay so now for this uh, we need to calculate those quantity so for this because that same question we have discussed so how do we your mass matrix and the stiffness matrix we will use directly so that is a m 0 0 2m not 2m it will be 3m and so 
it would be 3m in the u1 and it would be the m this and the, for this you need to calculate the flexibility matrix l cube over 6 ei into 2 3 3 8 and using that you can calculate the stiffness matrix by taking the inverse 1 by f so it will be coming out to be 6 ei by 7 l cube minus 3 minus 3 so if you put what is your m value m is given to you 75 thousand kg okay l is given to you 3 meter ai is given to you 425 into 10 to the power 6 newton meter square okay so i am keeping this factor as a k dash so k dash is the 6 ei by 7 l cube so if you put the value 6 into 425 into 10 to power 6 divide 7 into 3 cube so that would be coming out to be 134 920 63.5 okay so your you need to do the eigenvalue and eigenvector okay so when you do that your omega 1 would be the 10.19 radian per second or your omega 2 would be the 27.17 radian per second so if you calculate and your model vector pi1 would be 1 over 2.097 for this one and phi2 would be 1 over minus 1.431 okay so influence vector is done So, calculate the time period T1, 2 pi by omega 1, so that would be the 0 0.6208 second, if you calculate T2, that would be 2 pi by omega 2, so that would be the point. 2, 3, 1, 5 second. So from this response spectra, I have T1 is going to 0 0.6208 0 and T2 is 0.2315. So what will, what will be my spectral acceleration value? S1, S2. So the T1 would be lie in this range and T2 would be lying in this range. Okay. So, so my S1 would be 0.5 by T1G. S2 would be 1G. Okay. So, S1 is that. And do we need to scale it anywhere? Is it there to scale something? No. So your S1 will be 0.5 time 0 0.6208 time 9.81 and S2 would be 9.81. So that your I1 is equal to S1 is the same. So that will coming out to be. 7.9 meter per second square and a2 is coming out to be 9.81 meter per second square okay then the displacement dn would be an time omega n square 
so the d1 would be a1 by omega 1 square so that would be coming out to be 0 0.07714 meter d2 would be a2 by omega 2 square so that would be 0 0.0 1331 meter okay so now calculate the model participation factor so gamma n okay so for this gamma n gamma n is what phi n transpose mass matrix n plus vector divided by phi n t mass times the phi n okay so the phi n for phi 1 so the phi 1 it is over 1 2 point 0 9 7 mass matrix is the 3 m 0 0 m okay in plus vector 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 okay it will be same When you calculate it, you will get it 0 0.0865. Similarly, calculate the partial factor for 2. That would be the 1 minus 1.431. 3m, 0, 0, m. 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2. to do that you will get it 0.6204 so now here you may ask the question my model partition factor should be 1 but here how much we are getting it is 0 0.707 something or 0 0.7 so can you tell me why we are getting like this Anyone? Anyone? Because our influence vector, if you do that L in, a, in the case in the previous question that was the one one one. So that's why that was coming to be summation of Phi psi one that would be the gamma one would be one. Here your influence vector is the one by root to how much 0 0.707 or minus 0 0.707. So that would be summation of gamma and that both of them would be coming out to be this one 0 0.707. Okay. <coughs> so after getting that, you can find out the modal response. So that can be the Q1 time gamma n time dn. Okay. So the Q1 would be gamma 1 d1. So that would be the 0 0.0865 time 0 0.00071714. So that would be coming around. 6.67 m1 okay multiply it with 10 raised to power 3 also so that it would be easier okay so now you can calculate the lower displacement
so floor displacement u11 u21 would be pi1 q1 so that is 12.097 times 6.67 so that would be coming out to be 6.67 13.97 9.8 similarly u21 so that would be u12 u22 so that would be the pi2 q2 that would come out to 1 minus 1.4321 into 8.25 so that would be 8.25 11.80 ml okay so now they have asked you to find out the peak response okay so for this for the first story it would be u11 square u12 square and for the second story it would be u21 square u22 square okay so if you do that, your u11 is what? 6.67 square plus 8.25 square. That is coming out to be 10.6 ml. Okay. And then if you do that, the same thing, then it is 13.98 square plus minus 11.8 square. So that will be coming out to be. 18.29 ml okay so that was our part b now we have part c in the part c what we need to do we need to calculate the maximum bending moment at the fixed support by employing the model analysis in the srss rule okay so what is the maximum bending moment so the for this first they ask to find out to the model expansion so the model expansion is given is sn is equal to gamma n m time phi n okay so your s1 would be gamma 1 mass matrix phi 1 so we have gamma 1 0 0.0866 Six five mass matrix three m zero zero m time one two point zero nine seven. Okay, if you will do that, you will find out this as a point two five nine five point one eight one four, and that multiplication with the mass also. Same thing for the S two gamma two mass matrix phi two. So you will get it 1.8612.887 time the mass okay so the equivalent here <coughs> static force how much it would be f1 it would be sn time an okay so your f1 would be the s1 time a1 and a1 do we have a1 we have already okay so you can put the a1 value or let us first find out in terms of the a so that doesn't affect your calculation so at the end we will put the so that is like that okay so your this one So you have this S1 is the let us write it as a 0.26 M A1. Okay, and this one is the 0.1814 M A1. Okay. And for the second mode, that would be the 1.8612 M A2. And that the downward is the this would be not downward because this that is the upward because the sign is negative so that would be the 
0.887 m a2 so we have the value of m and a2 so your moment would be how much so this is for the first mode this is for the second mode so here it is maybe m1 mb1 mb2 so your mb1 so these are all how much 3 3 meter 3 meter is this 3 meter is this so mb1 would be 0.26 m a1 time 3 plus 0.1814 m time a2 okay time 3 okay if you could put the value 0.26 and a1 is what Seven point nine and nine point eight. So A one is the seven point nine, and that is three. Okay, plus point one eight one four. That would be also seventy five thousand. So it will be coming out. Similarly, MB2 that would be 1.8612 MA2 time 3 minus 0.887 MA2 time 3 that is 1.8612 75000 A2 was that 9.8 1 time 3 minus point eight eight seven seventy five thousand nine point eight one times three so that will be coming out to be two one five zero point three kilo newton meter okay so from this you can find the peak response so now your peak response would be mb1 square mb2 square so that would be your seven eighty four point five eight square plus two one five zero point three square so if you do that it will be coming on two two eight nine that's all any doubt in this question anyone any doubt uh, can you please explain this mass matrix once how you are on the mass matrix okay for this mass matrix if you apply a unit acceleration in the u1 direction okay okay so how much mass would be displaced that mass will also go to the unit and that is also the 2m will be go there so your m11 would be the 3m okay and when you apply a unit acceleration in the u2 direction then only this mass this mass will go to the downward direction so that m22 would be m clear okay add it out anyone all three questions or should we conclude the session anyone if you have any doubt you can ask me here or you can uh, write on the discussion form anything related to that we can discuss there if you don't have any doubt you can leave the meeting we will meet on the next tuesday
sir will, will there not be any effect of the other mass effect of the any other mass in in which question that is in the, uh, the, the, the just now you explained you know the mass calculation that mass matrix yes so you are considered only one mass exactly at the second degree of freedom just now you showed that sketch uh, wait 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 yes ah uh, yeah what about the 2m what was the 21 m21 2m that uh, yeah that is exactly at the column location that 2m what what is the contribution it will be there on uh, no no because because the acceleration is zero at, at that uh, that degree of freedom like how, how do we create that like let us suppose i am giving a unit is unit acceleration u double dot is equal to 1 okay i think for understanding maybe it will be better to assume as displacement no? because we can yes Uh, like so uh, uh, acceleration will happen automatically so we will consider unit displacement in this direction. so that, that is your mass okay yeah here yeah. it is 2m so if you if it is go there okay so that would be one is that m time one so that is the one force okay and yeah. one and that is also that will also displace yeah okay? correct so that is 2m time one so that is 3m okay up okay. now you are asking that m21 Hmm. So, M two one wait. Ah, uh, that will not happen because it will be zero because you know these are orthogonal. X yes X. Uh, what is that? Maybe you can call it three. Huh. This direction you are calling three direction. Yeah, but, you know you, you you have to assign because you and you two already assigned. You know that other yes. one should be three. You yes. three. Yes. So. And then when you go to the M two one at this place, your displacement is what acceleration would be zero or something else? No. Mm. But I see here also. Mm. Yeah, it's a rigid this one, so there is no displacement actually. Mm. So there is. But um, yeah, anyway, that uh, they have not defined the axial stiffness A by L. Uh, if we consider then whatever the effect, depending on the A by L, this will be acting. Okay. Axial stiffness. Anyway, axial stiffness is not uh, known actually. So. Is one <clears throat> when we give to one when we give to two yes because uh, we are uh, talking about the degree of freedom now like yeah. for that uh, for that let us. But I think uh, no, no. this uh, assumption itself, you now U and U two only yes. will not be right. I think you have to consider U one, U two, U three. I think then only no, this only the three, uh, two degree of freedom is there. So when it goes to U one, you will apply. Then this this will be go like that. If you will suppose like that, it will go like that. Ah, uh, correct, okay? correct, correct. Okay. So uh, then it will be have some one, and it will be have one. Yeah, yeah. So that would be three m. Okay. But in that U two direction, for the three direction, that U two is acceleration is zero. at that time in the one so your m21 would be zero because your acceler because it is not coming to downward mm. so your u2 is zero u double dot is zero so your force developed due to the this one is zero mass time but you, you see assuming this one and two is okay but uh, you, actually i think ideally you should have considered three i think u1 u2 u3 then only this uh, problem would be more yes like but for uh, simplification it is here only the okay there. For the when you consider the three, actually, if you will consider three, then it will what happen? You have to divide your acceleration. You are applying a unit in this one direction. Then it would be automatically one by root two, one by root two. You have to divide into a component. Okay. Then hmm. then it might play. Then in terms of that, you may have the coupling kind of things there. Hmm. When you apply the one and two, it would be same. Like for the three. 
third degree it would be 3m 0 0m for the three degree here and here can be some coupling yeah, yeah. kind of there mm. i think that can be there mm. that's all is it okay yes sir okay sir okay okay anyone uh, has any doubt if you don't have any one doubt any doubt you can leave the meeting so that i can conclude the session thank you so much sir thank okay, you thank thanks you. a lot thank you everyone for joining rohit do you have any doubt rohit no sir no sir okay thank you you can leave okay, the meeting thank you sir thank you thank you so much sir okay okay thank you